happy that you're here and I promise you that it's gonna be a very nice session. Uh, we have a number of universities here that will be presenting about the scholarships available at their institution. So if you're here, it will be good that you get your pen and paper because I'm sure you're gonna get a lot of information that will be very useful for you. But beside that, we're going to be sharing a link where you are gonna fill out your information and in case there's anything you miss, we're going to send you some detailed information and someone would also follow up with you to help you should you miss anything and wanna get more information. So we're going to paste that link right now uh, on the chat right there on YouTube. Go ahead and fill it before we start. We'll give you one minute to just fill that link. So you have the link right now on YouTube. Provide us your information. Somebody would help you send oh, some summary of the scholarship we're going to be presenting here today. And also, if you have more information with respect to how to follow up or how to start, that will also be an email you can follow up with. So uh, feel free to fill that information on the link. It should take you an average of one minute. The moment everyone is done that, we are gonna start right away. Okay, while we're doing that, let me just uh, go ahead and introduce myself. If you're meeting me for the first time, my name is Rita Oji. I am a professor of computer science at Dalhousie University and a Canada research chair. So uh, as a matter of a, a, a background, I did my first degree in Nigeria. I studied computer science. Then I did my master's and PhD abroad, after which I took up a position of a professor in Dalhousie here in Canada. So what is my passion is actually providing information for people. I know what it means to want to achieve, achieve your dreams, but lack the finance or the power to actually make that happen somehow. So I was lucky that throughout my study, I was sponsored. I used, I had one scholarship or the other that took care of every, all, my, all my education. So I didn't have to worry a lot about money. I know that if I had to pay for everything to get to where I am today, I wouldn't probably be here. So it's actually my passion to try to find information and provide people that are following me or the public, and also try to help and see how I can actually tell people how to do it. Because I know there are massive opportunities out there, but most times people lack the knowledge of what they could do and how to do it to be successful. So that's partly why I am hosting this webinar today. Like I said, we have uh, some representative from the universities here. We have a representative from the University of Ottawa who is going to talk about the scholarships available in their institution for both undergrad and grads and how you can go about applying. And we also have a representative from Dalhousie University where my home university, who is going to also talk about the scholarship available. I'm hoping that will be done uh, within an hour, all, the, all that we have to do. And I had a list of uh, some other scholarship I might, share, I might share with you. However, it depends on time. If we do not have time, maybe we can schedule for another day, but without wasting much time, I'm going to start right away. I'm going to give opportunity to, uh, the representative from the Housing University to talk about the available scholarship. Uh, she's going to more specifically talk about the scholarship available in the area of computer science. Maybe when I'm talking, I will talk about the broad ones that other people can take advantage of for graduate uh, studies and both undergrad. So Amanda. Hi, Rita. Yeah, it's okay if you can take the floor right now, you can, you don't mind to introduce yourself briefly and then go ahead and uh, talk about the scholarships. Yep, yeah, um, I'm Amanda Colwich, and I work for the Faculty of Computer Science at Dalhousie University with Rita. Um, I work in the field of undergraduate recruitment particularly, and I run our entrance scholarship program for all of our computer science students in the faculty. Um, 
So in addition to um, a lot of scholarships that you can win at Dalhousie University by virtue of your grades, um, as well as some other community engagement pieces that you might be doing um, at home, you can also win um, scholarships if you're applying to the Faculty of Computer Science in one of our undergraduate programs. Um, this year, we recently launched our um, an expansion to our We're All CS program, which used to primarily focus on bringing more female students into the Faculty of Computer Science. Um, but now it focuses on bringing more holistic diversity into the faculty. So one of those scholarships um, is the, the African descent um, student entrance scholarship for undergrad. So if you're someone who's wanting to come and pursue an undergraduate degree at, at Dalhousie University, um, in addition to all of the awards that Dalhousie might award you, you can also apply for the Faculty of Computer Science awards to top up on those scholarships. So our award, um, it's for two years and you would be, it's a total of $10,000. So you'd be getting $5,000 per year. Um, however, we don't think that just financial support is enough. So we want to also provide you with some, um, some social support. So we'll be offering you for your first two years, a peer mentor who will help guide you through how to learn at university and how to adapt to university life. Um, Cause it is a bit of a change, obviously, um, especially coming from another country. It can be quite uh, a big difference. Um, we'll also be giving you unique professional and personal development opportunities that your other fellow students might not receive. Um, so over the first two years, the real focus is really on you learning and being a student and being a successful student. After that, you can apply um, in your third and fourth year for the African Descent Student Leadership Scholarship. And those scholars, that scholarship again will get you another five thousand dollars for two years. So you'll you'll be awarded five thousand dollars each year um, for the for the last two years of your education. And at that point, we'll be matching you with an industry mentor. So preparing you to start thinking about what comes next after university, what career path you might want to to lead during university, um, and and how to get yourself ready and prepared to graduate and to enter the the working world. During this, you are also more than welcome to continue taking um, other, other things that might help you, such as co-op programs, um, which we have at Dalhousie, and those are all paid co-op programs, so they will also help financially support you, as well as get you some work experience to put on your resume. Um, and then in addition to that, um, you know, there, there is opportunities if you are into, into research and into learn higher learning um, to, to do honors programs or to, to win, win research grants to work with professors and then to go on maybe even to grad school if that's something that you're interested in. Um, so I highly recommend that if you are looking at any university to not only look at what the general university offers in terms of scholarships, but check if your program specifically offers scholarships um, that might be applicable to you, because on most occasions, those are in addition to the scholarships that you'll win directly from the university. Um, and for ours, we also have a few other awards um, and scholarships that you can apply to. We encourage you to apply to as many scholarships as you're applicable for in the Faculty of Computer Science. So we have some general entrance scholarships, which are only $5,000 for one year for your first year. Um, you can apply for the African Descent Scholarship. You can apply for the Women in Tech Scholarship. Um, anything that you can do that will help boost those, um, those scholarship applications. Um, for us, for the, um, for the computer science awards, um, our awards are not based on grades like the general university awards typically are. Our um, only requirement for your grades is that you are admitted into Dalhousie, into, one of, into our faculty. Um, what we're looking for is really your community involvement and your community engagement in whatever community means to you. So if community is a sports team that you're on, if community is um, your neighborhood, if community is a religious group that you're a part of, we wanna see that you've displayed some involvement in, the, in your community and that you're starting to display leadership within your community. We are not um, looking to produce um, people who are just coders. We, we really want to produce people who want to change the world coming out of Dalhousie. And that's the aim of these scholarships is to support people who are really going to make a difference in this world. Um, so I would hope that, you know, if you're 
whether you're in, you know, grade 10 or, or younger, you can still start looking at opportunities for you to engage in your community and engage in leadership and start to think about um, how to, how to make yourself stand out in those scholarships. Um, and I'll post a link to look at our scholarships. You can actually open the, the application is still live. So you can open it and even look at what the questions are. Um, if you're not uh, ready for undergraduate yet, those questions don't change too much year to year. So you'll get at least a good understanding of what we are looking for. Um, so I thank you for, for Rita for inviting me to this. And if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Oh. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Amanda. It's such an honor to have you here. Uh, uh, we're gonna be taking questions for Amanda. At the same time, we're posting the link to the scholarship and the information she talked about right there on the chat. Feel free to explore it. So if you have a question for Amanda, could you please send it on the chat? When I look uh, at the side, I'm just looking to see whether there are questions. So, so I can send it across to Amanda. Any questions that anyone would want to ask Amanda? Yeah, and if you think of questions um, and you don't have, you can't think of them right away, but if you think about them later, um, at the bottom of the link that I sent you, there's a connect with us box and all of those are links to my, my personal information since I'm the one who, who runs those scholarships. So there's um, a phone number, a WhatsApp number for texting if you use WhatsApp, um, a booking link where they can book a virtual meeting with me as well as an email address they can reach me at. Okay, awesome. So uh, if you have more questions, like Amanda said, we're sending the link to the scholarship and in there, you would find a detailed information about who to contact. Amanda's information is also there in case you need more information about the scholarship or how to go about applying for it. So you can easily reach Amanda even after this uh, section. So uh, someone said, is African Descent Scholarship full sponsored? Uh, that's, is it a full scholarship that cover everything? Amanda, I don't know whether you would want to respond to, to that. Um, yep, yeah. so the African Descent um, Scholarship will give you $5,000 per year for two years. And then in addition, if you get um, the leadership scholarship in your third and fourth year, you'll get another $5,000 for each of those years. So it won't fully cover your tuition, but it will certainly help go a long way. Okay, yeah. In addition, uh, being in Dalhousie, I can also tell you that uh, there are other scholarships available that are, not, that are probably general. You can actually get a number of scholarships that will go a long way supporting you. Uh, if not caring for most of your uh, school fees, it will pay for uh, a, a good percentage of it. So you're not restricted with respect to how many of them you can apply for. Okay, uh, uh, someone says applying for postgraduate in computer science. Yeah, Amanda would not take that, but I have an experience with that. I can talk about the postgraduate in computer science. So postgraduate in computer science, we also have a number of scholarship. I, I had planned to talk about the harmonized scholarship which is resident in the housing that is applied to every discipline you want to study. I saw someone talking about nursing and all the uh, social science courses. The good thing is that harmonized scholarship, uh, which I'm going to talk, up, touch, uh, touch about, talk up, about later, actually you can apply as soon as possible without even having gotten admission. And it is applicable to every department, not only computer science, but I wouldn't go into detail right now until I get to when I would like to talk about it. Okay, uh, uh, someone asked Amanda, I'm not sure I, I, this I really applies to you. Uh, she's asking whether someone, or I said a commercial student study computer science in your university. Uh, I uh, Probably I can take that. I've been in an admission committee, so I know. I, basically, if you're talking about being a commercial student at undergrad or grad, these are different. If you're an undergrad, there are the prerequisites to what you need to have. Basically for Nigerians, we only, uh, or for most Africans, we only need their secondary school 
uh, uh, good grade from their secondary school in relevant courses, right? Uh, you probably had need mathematics, English, and some other four courses to be able to qualify to apply to computer science. You don't necessarily need all the, uh, I don't think you need things like biology and the like to study computer science, but you basically need things like physics. Uh, at the same time, the good thing too is that, though we're not talking about admission today, in the housing, we have what we call applied computer science, and we have uh, uh, bachelors in core computer science. In applied one, there are some differences, but it, it's actually the same in a way, but let me not dwell on that. You can actually check these two out is on the website so we don't deviate a lot from what we plan to talk about today. So uh, uh, as we go to the next person, Amanda is on the chat, uh, YouTube responding to your question. So if you have more questions, please go ahead and ask her. Uh, right now, we're going to uh, thank Amanda for her time while she continues to respond to your questions that applies to her. Uh, we're going to move straight away to uh, the representative from University of Ottawa. I, I have Colin here. I think she also have uh, Colin's colleague. They probably introduce themselves and present what they have information about their scholarship and how to go about it. Thank you, Hello, Colin. everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, for inviting us to um, this uh, uh, presentation. Um, thank you very much uh, as well, Amanda, for you know, sharing more light on scholarships that uh, are present in, in the university. All right, um, I'll just start off and share my screen really quickly. Okay. Please let me know if you can see my screen. Collins, give me a minute. If okay. you're just joining us right now, please go to that pinned link and complete your information so that someone can follow up with you and you can get more information should you need that. Don't forget to complete that link, it's, it's important. Yeah, Collins, you can take over. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, um, just waiting for, okay, great. My name is Collins, I'm the International Recruitment Manager for the University of Ottawa. I'm um, great to be here. Uh, my colleague is here as well, um, Adedayo. She's part of the recruitment team. Uh, we're based in um, Nigeria and we are helping uh, English speaking African students who are interested in studying um, in Canada to gain uh, to get the necessary information uh, regarding admission. Um, with this presentation, we'll be looking at uh, why should you choose the University of Ottawa? So um, in terms of the scholarships, uh, programs that we have and other relevant um, information. So while, before we start, please on the chat, type um, what program and what degree that you are looking at. So if it's computer science, um, bachelor's, please type it in the chat and um, we would also look at some of those um, courses or programs. If it's master's uh, in medicine, please let, let us know in the chat and we'll get to it as soon as uh, possible. So why choose the University of Ottawa? University of Ottawa is the seventh uh, best university in Canada. And it's also the top 1% of um, institutions um, in, in the world. We have both French, English and French um, setups. So what that means is um, you can either study in English or study in French, and more on that later. We also have over 1,000 scholarships, all right? Um, I would also discuss, um, give a presentation on the scholarship as well. Core of opportunities, that means you can um, work while studying and earn money and while you work to help with your um, life in the university. If you're interested in research, University of Ottawa is also very, very, um, very, very, has places research as one of its priorities as well. Um, looking at the next slide, we have the main campus in the middle. 
um, it's close to Gatineau, which is in um, Quebec, which is, it, it takes a um, road, just one, that road, uh, at the top of the screen, if you can see it, just to get to the French speaking part of Canada. On the top left, you have the Parliament Hill um, where government policies and decisions are, are taken. So if you are into that kind of, uh, if you're in, going to law, you know, and um, other types of programs, it might be beneficial for you as well. Now the university is just a 15 minute walk across. Um, I always refer to it as a pizza slice. And of course, you know that Ottawa is in the capital um, of Canada um, as well. The university has over um, 42,000 students, there's 5,000 of the graduates and 7,000 graduate students. Um, 25, 21% of the national students come from all over um, the world, and hopefully you'll be part of them um, in September. There are six undergraduate faculty, faculties and three professional faculties, over 550 program combinations, 1, 000, over 1,000 um, research laboratories um, as well. So if, if you'd like to learn more about that, please reach out to us and we'll um, set you up as well. Biolinguism is one of the um, core parts of the university. That means if you want to study in French and write your exams in English, you can do that. If you want to um, study in English and write your exams in French, you can do that as well. So um, you are free uh, as long as your course um, dictates that as well. So we have a number of faculties. We have the Faculty of Arts, Science, Health Sciences, um, Management, Law, Education, and Medicine. I would just, uh, the number of courses that um, we've been getting um, requests for, um, not seeing um, software engineering, me mechanical engineering. Um, so just let us know what, what you're looking at and would we'll get, would we'll, um, check out some of those courses and give you more information as well. How, what's the next step? You've picked a number of courses. So what's the next step? The next step is for you to apply on OUAC, um, which is the Ontario University Application Center. Uh, the reason for this is because the university is in the Ontario province and all students need to apply, we call it WAC, WAC platform. So all um, students need to apply through this platform uh, before they get access to the university. Now, once you apply, um, the link is, is right there on the top right. Once you apply, send in your document, the University of Ottawa receives your application um, and also grants you access um, to Eurozone with your student number. Uh, this way you can now submit your documents and wait for an answer for our admission. Application deadline, however, is um, April 1st for most programs. Um, and of course, the deadline for submitting your documents is April 30th. Um, from latest on, the, on their webs, on the Canadian government website, the current processing time for um, student visa or study visa is about 12 weeks. So the earlier you apply, the better. Um, one information you should note as well is for undergraduate um, programs, for undergraduate um, level, the application fee is about 256 Canadian dollars. And I know that um, some people might ask in the chat, um, is there any application waiver, application fee waiver? For now, um, there are no waivers because the application fee goes to the UAC platform, right? The application fee goes to the UAC platform. And just in case somebody would ask um, on the chat. For masters um, and PhD um, students, um, it's very, very important to know if you are going for a course-based or a thesis-based uh, um, program. Now, we would also, um, our colleague was going to share a link on YouTube. I think it's already there. Please fill out the information. We will use that to send you um, more, more, more information on what you need to know about starting your application. 
So um, it is, they're going to share a link shortly on the chat. Please look out for that as well. Now, important documents that you need to um, gather or you need to prepare for your application is a completed OAC application form. I paid, you paid your application fees. You have your transcripts um, from your school and of, of course your certificate. So if you don't have a certificate, that's this for um, graduate students. Now, if you don't have a certificate, but you have your transcript, you can use that um, to apply while you work towards getting your um, certificate or your final result. Now, for undergraduate level, if you don't have a WIAC result, or if you're coming from, uh, of course, in Ghana is WIAC as well, but if you're coming from other country and you're on this um, webinar, if you have your transcripts, um, SS1, SS2, that's high school um, transcripts, you can also apply with that as well. That gives the university an idea of the um, your trajectory of your, of your grades um, as well. Now, while applying on the platform, you have opportunity to select three programs that you like to apply for with your results. And with those three programs, you would now get an admission offer for a program that you know, the university feels you'll be better suited for. So you have opportunity to select up to three uh, programs. Now, for people, uh, a number of people would also ask that why um, are they going to write ILTS? Uh, for country, for students who are coming from countries who English is their official um, language, they may not need to write um, ILTS. The second crevice there is they would need to um, have studied in an English speaking institution. So those are the two, um, two requirements. You would need to come from a country whose English um, English is a, um, an official language, and you need to study in an English speaking institution as well to be able to be exempted from uh, you know, submitting IELTS, your IELTS results. Other documents may be requested depending on the review of your application. Please also stay close to your, your email um, in my call at any time. Now, how do you pay for your, your program? So the tuition fee raises, um, um, ranges from $36,000 to about $50,000 um, Canadian dollars. Now the average cost, monthly cost of living in Ottawa is about um, $1,600 as well. Now the beautiful thing about the university is they have um, is a, um, a stop shop and that means you can go there, maybe you're coming into the um, university and you probably don't have boots, you don't have coats. You can go there and um, you know, request for these things and somebody would also help you with that. If you're living in the university and you have clothes that, you know, you, that are good, that you know, are very good, you can also tender that as well. That would help incoming students who might not really have um, those materials as well. So, a very open and very um, cordial um, university. So these are the scholarship that these are the you know a few of the scholarships that we have on offer. Um, one of the most important ones to be focusing on is the entrance and excellence scholarship for African um, students. Now, this gives between twenty uh, up to twenty and twenty five thousand per year in scholarships. So for the entrance scholarships, we're looking at admission average of 90% and lower to get up to $20,000 per year. Um, you can also get $25,000 if your admission average is 90% and higher. Um, the number of courses for engineering, civil engineering, chemical engineering, for sciences, um, all programs except the ones listed um, as well. For social sciences, you have public administration, international development and globalization, sociology, conflict studies, um, and anthropology. Now, this is another opportunity to be able to um, make, um, earn something for yourself while you're studying. So the university has created um, co-op placements um, 
and of course merge that with academic placements as well. So you study um, at that particular period and work um, at a particular period as well. So if you're on holiday um, and you would, would, would like to earn some money, you can also do that as well. The university also has arrangement um, in the institution where you can work um, right there in the university as well. And most people earn between 35,000 and 45,000 um, Canadian dollars per year. Um, but there are over 4,000 um, employers in Canada. Um, I'm looking for, that, for, for 12 students all the time, from HP um, to Tesla to Ford to Cisco. Um, computer science, if you're, if you're, if you're looking at um, applying for computer science, this is a great opportunity for you um, as well. Now, one, of, one important thing in university is catering, catering to um, all students, especially first-year students. First-year students get guaranteed housing um, in their, in, in, as they come in, um, and this is very, very important. What they will need to apply um, by June 1st to be able to get allocation because, of course, there are a lot of people um, applying as well. Free Wi-Fi in all residences. I'm sure this is great news for a number of people. You don't have to pay um, for that. So they, they have um, different styles of residences. The more um, the more personal the resident, the more expensive it might be. So if you would like to share space with somebody, it might be less expensive than having your room to yourself or maybe a bathroom to yourself. Again, um, the, what we've, the trend we've seen is after first year, uh, most students want to stay outside campus, and we have residences close to the university. Center Town has a number of residences that you know students can also um, rent. Rent. Um, there's also Sandy Hill who, that has a number of residences as well. Um, in, depending on your um, dietary options, you will need to speak to a dietitian on your uh, preferred. Um, dietary option and of course they would they would look out for that and give you if you don't if you don't have exactly that um assign something a meal plan that is suitable or that is um that can be an alternative to your dietary option there's all you can eat um 10 a.m to 11 p.m um for all students now there are a number of people who have reached out um, people from the um, giants of Africa that play basketball, Lagos, um, you know, people that play basketball in Nigeria and other countries have reached out to us. And the university has so many um, very, very critical points for people who are interested in sports, um, from the Olympic side swimming pool to fitness centers to dance studios to the pitch, um, to the uh, FIFA rated pitch as well. So many sports that they can take part in volleyball, baseball, um, as well, football, but for the uh, football loving fans, the basketball, as like I said, um, as well. And one of the, the many reasons why students choose Ottawa is because um, there's this friendliness and diversity inclusion. Um, it's, it's clean, affordable to get around. Um, of course, high incomes and low employment rates, of course, when you're close to the parliament here, you get. Um, a number of advantages. Again, for a graduate student, you need to go to the link on the top right um, and apply. Application fee is 256 Canadian dollars. Um, for master's student, you need to, we'll send you the link for that. Fill in, please fill in the form we're going to share on the chat now. Um, we we'll would also send you the next steps as well. For graduates, it's about 110 um, Canadian dollars as well. My name is Collins, I'm part of the international recruitment team. You can actually just reach out to us via an email, africaadm or via WhatsApp. Our WhatsApp number is 90 712 35106 as well. Thank you very much and look forward to your questions. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Collins. That was a, a very good information you just shared. 
So uh, we have a few minutes for uh, maybe two minutes for questions for uh, Mr. Colin for anything related to U of T, uh, U of University of Ottawa, sorry, uh, admission and scholarship. You can send the question on the chat. Uh, they'll be there to answer the question uh, as you send it. Beside, uh, you can also see the link pinned on the YouTube. Please feel that you will get more information and you also be contacted should you have any question or stuff, someone will reach out to you. You also have their emails and uh, phone contact, including WhatsApp to reach them as may be necessary. So what I'm gonna do uh, right now is share some other scholarship that might also benefit you. So let me try to share my... my screen. Feel free to ask your questions. I think Collins and uh, uh, Amanda are still there to answer your questions on YouTube. Just send across your question. So there are some other scholarships that are, are available in Canada as well. That's what I'm going to share at this moment. One of them, is the IBET PhD scholarship. So this scholarship is available for a number of universities in a number of universities in Canada and specifically for people pursuing PhD in engineering. As you can see, it offers you opportunity to get up to $30,000 per year and it's not available in all the universities. These are the universities that can take advantage of that. Uh, McMaster University, U of Ottawa, University of Toronto, Queen's University, University of Waterloo. In Waterloo, actually, it's available for both engineering and mathematics. So uh, it's also available in these universities below, as you can see. I will have uh, uh, the University of Alberta, University of Calgary, McGill University, Ontario Tech, and Ryerson University, University of Windsor, and uh, York University. Uh, for each university, uh, have their own deadline for application. So if you're interested in this uh, scholarship, what you're going to do is reach out to the university, check out their deadline to when applications are due. I'm sure that some of the applications for this year for some of the universities are already past due date, but some others might be open. Also, check out the courses that are available where the scholarship can be, or, uh, can be uh, I mean, awarded. Uh, they said engineering, but I know that in some universities, some other courses like in Waterloo, mathematics uh, is also included. So you can check it out. As, as you can see here, this is the address. It's called IBET. IBET scholarship, as you can see up here. So the second one I would want to talk about is the Slumberger Foundation Faculty for the Future. I actually got the scholarship, uh, but although I declined for it because I had other scholarship that I couldn't hold them together. So this is a very nice one. Um, this scholarship is meant to support Africans and people in developing countries, women specifically. So if you click uh, the scholarship details, you can see it's a very nice one. They've awarded up to 770 women scholarship from 84 countries. So these are mainly developing countries, including African countries. So uh, what's the value of this scholarship? 
if you're doing PhD, this scholarship is gonna give you $50,000 per year. And if you're doing a, a postdoc, it will give you $40,000 for postdoc per year. And this is USD, $40,000 United States dollars. So what is good again about this scholarship is that if you have a family, you have dependents, it gives you extra money to support your dependents. So you can actually travel with your kids. And this scholarship provide additional support, extra money to support your kids. You can, what is required here, uh, as you, you probably will check out the eligibility criteria yourself for, for time it's here. You need to find a, a supervisor abroad. So it's not restricted, it can be in UK, it can be in Canada, it can be United States or any other place and uh, apply. So for you to be able to apply for this, you must have applied for admission, right? Or gotten the admission. If you're still intending to apply for admission, then you're not qualified to apply for this scholarship. So you, you should find a supervisor, apply for admission, and then you apply for this scholarship. It is very, very nice in as much as that, because I told you I got it, but although I didn't use it, I declined uh, because I had other uh, scholarship that are conflicting. I couldn't hold two of them together. But what is important here is that it does not just evaluate your grades, just like many people would think, like if you don't make first class, you're not eligible for many scholarships. It's not actually true. Uh, there are a lot of scholarships I'm gonna show you today that actually there's a balance between both good grade, leadership, research potential, and other things they look at, right? Uh, uh, so this is it about uh, um, Slumberger Foundation Scholarship. It's really, really a very nice one. I would encourage you to apply if you're a woman in STEM. So I, I, I want to mention that it is meant for people in STEM, that's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. The deadline, this is a very good time. The deadline is usually around September 8th, right? It opens up September 8th. Uh, it's, I mean, the deadline is just September 8th. So if you're planning to apply this year, this is a good opportunity to start your application. Send in your application to university you want to use for admission and maybe contact a supervisor. Say, I'm, I'm hoping to come with a Slumberger Foundation Scholarship because the requirement is that you must have applied for admission or have gotten admission to apply for this scholarship. So there, that would be a university that would, because the university, host university would have to write a letter for you as well. So start checking out the scholarship right now. If you are a woman in STEM, it might be a good one for you. This is what the application portal looks like. Uh, it's something like this. And if you want to know the eligibility criteria, it's here. You can apparently read it up and get the details. The one for 2023 and 2024 will soon be open. So the next one is a very, another very good scholarship. It's called Venia Scholarship. Venia Scholarship is a, 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 another PhD scholarship uh, resident here in Canada. I got, uh, I received also this scholarship as a, as a student here. And uh, I think I sponsored most of my PhD for four years. It's, a, it's the most prestigious scholarship in Canada. So it's around $50,000 per year uh, for four years, I guess, uh, if I remember rightly. It's either for four or three years, but I know it covers the entire PhD period for me. So, uh, so check it out. Usually uh, to provide you a bit of context, maybe I should take time and talk about the scholarship since it's very competitive, but it's actually gonna worth all your effort if you get it. I promise you that. And they haven't gotten it in the past. I can also say that most people I mentored actually went ahead and won the scholarship as well. So uh, I, what I can tell you here is if you're trying to apply, if, you're, if you have a first class or really, really very high to one, it might worth looking out uh, for this scholarship. But what is interesting here is that it is not only your academic performance that is being evaluated, it is one of it. You can see here, these are the criteria. You have the academic performance as well, academic excellence. You have the research potential, have leadership. And if you read uh, the details, you can see maybe academic performance, I just take a percentage, maybe 40%. Research potential might be 30, and this other one, leadership might be 30. So that actually tells you that even if you have first class here and suck in this two and not doing well here, you're not gonna get it. And someone who is actually not really having the top notch result, in as much as most people are gonna be nominated would have top notch results, but someone who has 100, someone who has 80, 
the person that has it might actually end up getting it if their score really high here. And where people actually tend to miss the point is when they talk about leadership potential. I think the next time I'm gonna come up will be, uh, I think I was privileged, I won uh, probably hundreds of scholarship as a student. So I, I, I basically know what they really want. So most times people focus on, on academic excellence and forget about this. And when you talk about leadership also, people tend to think what, I don't have any leadership, but interestingly, if you grew up in Africa, most of us we do. You know, I remember uh, uh, ranging from taking leadership position in your church to your community and a lot of things. But most people actually discount that as not applicable, but they do. It's a, a matter of you sitting down to take stock. Another thing you need to know about this is that if you're hoping to go for a Vineyard scholarship for this year, this is time to start. The deadline for most of this uh, university for applying for internal competition for to be nominated for this, because there are stages of competition, the deadline will usually start from April. So this is the time to start reaching out to the university and say, hey, I want to compete for this scholarship. Right, because the department will nominate you, the faculty will go for faculty, faculty will have to nominate you, university before you apparently go for the national competition. So this is the time to start. Starting on time is always the, the first step towards winning any scholarship. You don't just wake up and win some competitive scholarship, you plan it. So uh, the other one, which I had already uh, mentioned briefly, it's available in Dalhousie, right? The deadline just passed. Uh, I think the deadline was uh, 15th or so of January. So, but what's uh, 15th of January or something? Focus please or something. So, but what, I, what do I want to say about this? People have been asking how about graduate uh, program. So this is a very nice scholarship in a way that is resident in Dalhousie. This scholarship is open to anybody studying any course in Dalhousie, both masters and PhD. So what they did here is that they brought all the scholarship available in the institution together under the harmonized scholarship. They called it harmonized scholarship. So with one application, you apply for so many scholarships at a time. You don't need to specify which one you're applying for. You just submit that one application and you're eligible. They, they check you for eligible for most of the, all the scholarship available and see the one you can get. I've got a number of students who uh, got the scholarship in the past, and I can tell you the application is not that tedious. Uh, it, it's very good. It's available for all the courses held, engineering, social sciences, uh, or computer science, and all other sciences. Please look out for it. It's uh, like other courses, it is not only grades that it looks at. It looks at your research potential, your leadership, and other things. You need to write maybe like five pages, but I, I do see the application process as very straightforward compared to all the other applications I've seen. So for people asking for different different courses, this is the scholarship for you. It, uh, it's not restricted to any course. So check it out at the housing. It's called the Harmonized Scholarship. This is the name right here. Harmonized Scholarship process. So if you, if you check it out, you're gonna be amazed at uh, what you will find. There's also another one available in Ottawa. At the time I was uh, assessing it, uh, it's called Ottawa Community Foundation. I wasn't really, I didn't get a lot of information, but what I, I know from here is that this scholarship is available for blacks and you can easily apply here. Uh, they tend to use it to um, recognize people with outstanding performance, young black people with outstanding performance, some of them might require you to apply after you already started your program, some of them before you start. But what is important is knowing that they are available, right? The moment you're here, you, you are not restricted to just, you know, there are so many bits and pieces of scholarship you can apply for as long as you, you have what it takes and you are up for it. So this is, a, this is also another one. Uh, I mean, there's also the RBC uh, Capital Market Pathway Diversity Program. Uh, so this is also focused on uh, uh, Black and some other minorities, basically. And this is mostly for people studying courses in the area of related to banking and marketing and all this kind of thing. And they have more like uh, multiple uh, awards of $10,000 each. 
and uh, they have the eligibility criteria here, but this is more like people in management and the uh, banking related courses. So check this one out. This is the address and the name is uh, Pathway Diversity Award by RBC. So the other one uh, is what they call the Lesser Pearson International Scholarship. Lester Pearson uh, International uh, Scholarship. So this one is also good, but might not be the one to cover all your program. So like I said, some of them are just uh, not meant to cover your entire program, but gives you a good amount of money that when you get one or two of the like, it probably takes care of most of your uh, program fees, right? So the, this one actually is a good one. It will cover your tuition, books, incidental fees, and full residence support for four years. But the, this particular university, uh, this particular scholarship is tenable to only University of Toronto. So you can check it out. It's available for people who are entering into their undergraduate programs. So most of the undergraduate program are included for the first time. So check this out. It's a very good one. This is more like a full ride kind of uh, scholarship. So we've talked uh, most of most of what we've said so far. Have uh, focused on undergrad and the grad uh, students, but there's also some scholarship available for postdocs. In case you're looking at postdoc, this is the Banting postdoctoral fellow, one of another one of the very prestigious one in Canada. I also held this uh, held this uh, fellowship. So it's uh, valued at uh, seventy thousand dollars per year and you're gonna have it for two years. So just like the process I described in Venia, this is a, this, uh, the, the higher level of, a, almost on the same category with Venia, but this is meant for postdoc, people who, have, who are done with their PhD and are ready to go into postdoc. So the good thing about both Venia and this is that they are open for everybody. It's not only for Canadians, you can be international student and still apply. So you can check this out and it takes the same process like Venia. So you need to contact a supervisor in a university you want to work with. And uh, uh, after that, start checking out the application process. It's a bit tedious, but I can tell you that it's worth all the effort. I tend to tell people, even if you don't get it, it teaches, you learn a lot of things doing it. Like I said, I got this as well, but I wouldn't uh, have time to talk about in detail. One of the tips I would tell anybody that wants to apply is start on time. Don't wait until the last minute. There are, there are scholarships you wouldn't win on the last minute. You need to plan it. You, win, you need plan to win that, to win them. So. I think those are, are, are probably the much I can cover to, for today because of the time. There's also Trudeau Foundation uh, uh, doctoral uh, scholarship, but I wouldn't talk about that in detail too. And there are a lot of universities in Canada are participating in that. Um, it's also it's open for Africans, permanent residents and others and international. So, so anybody can actually apply to this. You don't have to be in Canada to be able to apply. This is the name here. So you can check it out. Just type the name when you see it. It's also a very, very nice one. The scholarship would offer you around $40,000 per year for three years. And then it gives you additional $20,000 for three years as research and travel allowance. So if you add the two up, you're having 60K. And then you can also you have also an opportunity to for the fourth year to be covered for the first year, fourth year as well. So there's a lot of uh, things here that is actually very much worth it. So this particular one, like people that tend to ask, do we have scholarship for social sciences and humanities? Yes, this particular one is actually not for STEM. It's actually for humanities and social sciences specifically. So if you're in humanities and social sciences, this is a scholarship for you. The, the Trudeau uh, Foundation Doctoral Scholarship is for you. I've talked about Banting already. 
So uh, I think I would stop here, probably take any question before we, we, we end for today. So uh, are there some questions that we have both for myself and, or other of the panelists before we end? So yeah, I I'm, I I will look I'll look at the chat briefly and then if there are questions I can address right now, I will do. If not, I will address them eventually. Just check back on the comments. We will address the questions eventually. Okay, uh, someone said in, interested in pursuing a master's program in UK. I think you should check some available scholarships in UK. Here, we mainly talked about scholarships in Canada. Uh, or some of them, uh, maybe next time I will talk about scholarship in the US and then uh, probably look for those that are available in UK. But today I do not have uh, much information about scholarship available in UK, but I know if you're looking at EU countries, one of the most popular scholarships that a lot of Africans have used is what we call it, Erasmus Scholarship, which is a, a, a great yeah. one that covers most of the courses. So you can actually check that out. Yeah, someone asked about postdoc opportunities. Ash, the Banting Scholarship, which are Banting Fellowship, which I just shared lastly, is actually for postdoc. And apart from that, there are others, but some of them are kind of restricted to permanent residents and the uh, citizens. So, but this Banting is open for everyone. So it's a good one. Uh, some universities like Dahousie also have postdoctoral uh, funding, like the Killam. Killam Scholarship, uh, po Postdoctoral postdoctoral fellowship is also available in the housing and some other university. I think maybe uh, a U of uh, University of Ottawa might also have. So check that Clam scholarship uh, fellowship. It's available for both postdoc and PhD. I didn't present it here, but yes, it is available. If you apply for uh, harmonize, if you're a graduate student, they also consider you for Clam. I think. But if you're a postdoc, check specifically like CLAM scholarship, CLAM scholarship in the housing, uh, it's for postdoc. Apart from that, professors tend to also have money for outstanding postdoctoral fellows that could help them in their research and in their lab. So you can also reach out to professors. So someone uh, in, in law who uh, has a first degree in law but wishes to do um, postgraduate in privacy and cyber security from the legal angle. Of course, those are available within the law faculty. You don't have to do it in computer science, right? I know one of my friends, a professor also of Nigerian descent is a professor in University of Calgary. His area is uh, AI law that's artificial intelligence and law. And he did his PhD in, the, in, the, in, in law faculty, it wasn't in computer science. So you look for admission in, in faculty of law, not in computer science. Yeah, people are talked about having a good GPA and moving from bachelor's to post uh, to PhD. Yes, it's, a, it's, a, it's possible. People have moved from bachelor's to PhD. It's mostly applicable in the in United States, uh, but also we do it in a way in, uh, in, in Canada as well, especially in computer science. But uh, I, I, I wouldn't do it myself. I, what we do uh, basically is probably you can get someone into master's and if the person proves him or herself to be very good, then you can immediately transfer the person to PhD uh, straight. So there are opportunities for that. You can also check it, check it out. I mean, opportunity for those in supply chain. Supply chain is that uh, it should be one of those. There are many opportunities we provide, we present that for those in management who manages and social sciences. I guess supply chain should be one of those. So uh, most of this scholarship wouldn't really tell you only uh, in supply chain. It tells you for management. 
for social sciences, for humanities, right? Then you decide where did your department or your course fall into and then apply accordingly. So supply chain should be in one of those, right? Yeah, if you want to be my mentee, just try to reach me online. I am not, uh, uh, I have a lot of mentee already. I take new ones when I when I graduate the ones I have uh, to be able to manage them effectively. But yeah, if you reach out to me at the appropriate time, I might, there might you might be lucky to that I have some opportunity to take a new, a new person. Okay, some people are asking, uh, like someone said he has a, a, a second class offer in electrical electronics engineering and now is it possible to further in automation engineering or industrial automation? Uh, it's always possible to uh, do a grad school in a field related to what you've done in, in your undergrad, right? But if you want to do a big jump, uh, like I have a lot of people who did not do, first, who did not do computer science in their first degree, but apparently want to com come to computer science for their graduate program. The, the problem with that, we, we do that. We actually do, uh, uh, the good thing about computer science at the house is that we have a lot of programs that is more like a bridge program that can accommodate people who are not in core computer science, things like digital innovation. If you're looking for uh, computer science related stuff, but you didn't do, you are not in core computer science from your undergrad, please check for digital innovation program in their house, that's a good one. And we have a lot of uh, people that are not core computer scientists, medical doctors, uh, lawyers, business people studying that program. And it is resident in the faculty of computer science. So it's a good bridging program, right? So check it out. Some other school might also have that, but you also want to be careful when you want to do a big jump from one, uh, uh, apart from this bridging program, if you want to do a big jump from maybe a department that is unrelated to another one. Remember, you do not have the core background. You might struggle a lot, even if they admit to. At times, we also admit, but you would have to do a lot of undergraduate courses to get a base in that your new field, right? So I would encourage you to watch my last video before this one that I'm making that I'm, I'm, I'm making right now in this YouTube. That is where I addressed I addressed most of such related questions. So I think uh, uh, I will probably attend to more questions later, but we are going to stop right now. Um, so uh, someone asked about running a master with a second class lower. I think I've seen someone that uh, uh, doing a master's with a second class lower. It's not always uh, the, the most straightforward admission you could get. You might need to try to show that you have acquired relevant experience or developed yourself in a way that made you move beyond that second class lower uh, grade, right? But it's not impossible, but you might need to kind of do the extra thing of showing what, how you have improved yourself in the meantime, there are so many ways people have done that, including improving their research potential, taking up some other online courses that are related to, to their course, especially in the areas that they showed deficiency in their results, to show that actually I am no longer in that level. I've done a lot of things, self-improvement, extra studies that have moved me beyond that to one level. So, but it is possible, but you need to plan it, basically. It doesn't just happen. So yeah, we'll end it here for today. And uh, we'll plan the next one, probably in the next one, we're going to talk about writing a winning scholarship. I mean, for different grades, it doesn't, like I said, it's not usually your academic only. You need to write about research related things and leadership. And this is where, based on being part of the core panel of evaluation from many of these scholarships and winning hundreds of them, I know that your academic alone in most cases is not enough to give you a scholarship, especially most of these competitive ones that are not automatic. 
So talking about this, and this will be applicable for both undergrad and graduate students, because sometimes people actually have what it takes, but they, they actually do not know how to present it, or they do not know that what they have, the experience they had from their past, actually suffices and can be presented in a way that it will be captivating and somebody would actually want to pay you to come and do something because you actually have a, 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 an experience. So it's more like matching what you have, taking an history of your life, your life experiences, and being able to tell a story in a context relevant way that would win you the award. So it's not a matter of bullet pointing, hey, I did this, I was this, I was that. Those are not how to write a winning one. It is a narrative that shows both impact and outcome and need and how you fulfill it. So uh, we'll talk about that one some other time. Uh, I would stop right now and say thank you everyone for coming. I will see you in my next video. Where this video, we're going to make it uh, available so people can easily share it and um, share it wide. Please, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. We're gonna have more information coming soon. And uh, if your question is not yet answered, hopefully we get to it in the next section or if I have time, I will respond to it eventually. Thank you everyone, the panelists. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Collins. And uh, thank you, uh, Adebayo. And thank you, uh, Joseph. And everyone, thank you, the audience for coming. And I hope to see you all soon. Uh, share the video, like it, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks.